Well, hello there. This is Cliff Searcy with another edition of Music and the Word with the Searcy's. And this is going to be a very different kind of broadcast. We're going to be talking about all the hatred in the world today. Paul the Apostle prophesied to Timothy that there would be this kind of hatred in our world today. And so there's protection for us. We're going to sing about it. Anita's coming to sing, Hide Thou Me. Thank you for listening to our music today. We really appreciate that. Now, we've got a very, very somber message today, okay? It's a very important message, and it's kind of involved, and it's kind of deep. We're going to talk today about the devil. Now, I hate to do that. I hate to talk about the devil because I hate to give him any attention. I hate to in any way acknowledge that he even exists, but he does. He's a very real person. Jesus made that very, very clear that there actually was a personage called the devil that was very very real jesus believed that to be the case paul the apostle wrote about him often the apostles believed the devil was real and i do too and so we're going to talk today about how there's hatred in our world and how the hatred that's being manifest day after day after day in our world is coming from the influence of the devil in our lives and in our world today, okay? And again, I don't like to do that because I don't like to acknowledge what he does accomplish. I don't like to talk about him, you know? But it's sometimes necessary to kind of pull back the curtain to let you see what's really happening for the scriptures tell us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Sometimes we think we're fighting against people, but the scriptures tell us that we're fighting against principalities and powers and spirits of wickedness in high places. We're fighting against demonic powers. We're fighting against the devil himself. And sometimes we think we're just fighting against people, but we don't understand that the people are influenced and motivated to do what they're doing because of the influence of the devil in their lives, okay? And so Paul the Apostle said that we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. We know his playbook. 
Hey, if you're a football fan, you've had plenty of football <laughs> this past weekend with the college games and uh, the playoffs are coming. And um, I'll tell you what, there's football everywhere. The, the wrapping things up, we'll have the Super Bowl before long. What a tremendous time for football fans. And when you go there and you watch the games, you're going to see the strategy. You're going to see the uh, plays and sometimes trick plays that, that are happening and how in the, in the end part of the game, how the coaches will manipulate the clock and how they'll maintain their time and how they'll be so strategic. You're going to see all kinds of strategy. And sometimes you'll see plays you've never seen that way before. But Paul said about the devil, we're not ignorant of his devices. He does not have a big playbook. He does the same things over and over and over again. He doesn't need to enlarge his playbook. He doesn't need to come up with new strategies. The ones he's been using for thousands of years, they work well. And so he just sticks with his basics and he does the same things over and over and over again. And you can recognize when he's doing it. And Paul the Apostle said, hey, you can understand that it's the devil that's working, that it's the devil that's behind these things because we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, I want you to look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. Paul was talking to his son in the faith, Timothy, and explaining what was going to happen in the very, very last days, the days that we're living in now. And he said, mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive. Did you hear that? Abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good. In fact, another version says that they're haters of those that are good. Treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. You see that? Abusive, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, but haters of those that are good. I'll tell you what, does that fit? what's going on in our world today, treacherous, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. That is a blueprint of what is going on in our world today. And so it's really interesting to me to see how Paul the Apostle prophesied through Timothy to us so that we would understand that God knew way back then that this is what we were going to be dealing with today, okay? Now, we have a thing every other Tuesday morning at our church called Prayer and Conversation. And it's at 7.30 in the morning, and a bunch of us guys get together for, for prayer and conversation. And Gary McSpadden, our former pastor who went to be with the Lord, he started this. And believe it or not, he put more of the emphasis on conversation than prayer. We would get together for an hour, hour and a half, and we would pray. We would really have a list of needs and pray for the needs. But he said, I just don't want us praying. I want us talking. I want us conversing. And so we would spend much of that time sharing what was on our heart, sharing with what we felt the Lord had uh, impressed upon us that day, and also just kind of talking about where we're at, what we're dealing with, what, what kind of issues we're facing. And uh, it was a great time because men don't really always open up like women do. And, and so when we get together with Pastor Gary. Uh, we would just uh, have an opportunity just to share what was on our hearts to other brothers who loved us and would understand uh, what we were dealing with and what issues we had. And it would really, we talk about our families. We'd always talk about praying for our wives and, and, and uh, our spouses. And, and it was just a great time. And so that's carried on with our new pastor, Dr. Mike Brown. And so we gathered still every Tuesday morning and we do discuss these things. And we were talking Oh, a couple of weeks ago, about the interest that there is in the world today among the supernatural. We got talking about that for a while because it really is really interesting about how the world that turns its back and turns its interest away from God is so fascinated with the occult and so fascinated with the work of the devil. All you got to do is look on TV or go to the movies and see what is actually drawing such great crowds and drawing such great ratings. Now, back years ago, back in the 60s, we had some uh, programs that just kind of were introductory programs to these kind of things that kind of just uh, got people to put their toe in the water, so to speak. You remember Bewitched? Remember that show? And then, and then the follow-up to that, the spinoff, Sabrina? 
uh, they, they they were just trying to be whimsical and charming and just uh, uh, little harmless things about the fun about someone being a good witch. It just kind of opened people's minds to that now. There's a show on right now called Ghosts. And I tuned into a couple of episodes because I just wanted to, to, to see just exactly what they're doing and, and what their approach was. It's supposed to be kind of like Bewitched was. It's supposed to be fun and whimsical and just a comedy and, and no dark side to it. And they try to keep it light. I watched two episodes and um, it, it'll be recorded in the history of my life that I've only ever watched two episodes of that show. I have no desire to go back for any more. I, I didn't like what I saw. Yeah, everything's fun and it's dealing with some uh, ghosts that, that, that are there together conversing and, and being friends from all different time periods. But in the one episode, they started getting involved with Dungeons and Dragons that got people playing Dungeons and Dragons. And so much of that episode was focusing on explaining how Dungeons and Dragons works and how it really created an appetite to the people that weren't so familiar with that game that goes back to the 80s. Some of the folks probably were not so familiar with Dungeons and Dragons. And so they were explaining it, they were playing it, and uh, creating interest in that game. Now, as you probably know, that's a fantasy role-playing game, and... Uh, there's been a lot of harm that have happened to a lot of young people. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons have uh, brought people right into demon activity. Some of the folks that have come out of that obsession with that game have said that they actually got involved in demonic activity because of that game. And it's something where people have gone as long as 48 hours playing that game without stopping to eat, not stopping to sleep. They, they just were obsessed with it. It's a game that opens you up to the dark side. Ouija boards are another thing that opens people up to the dark side. You don't want to open the door to that kind of thing. So I saw this ghost show as something that maybe people would allow their kids to see. It seemed to be a lot of fun. But then I started to see the things that it was advancing, and they were very, very dangerous in my view. Focus on the family, Dr. James Dobson, they've written much about the dangers and the suicides that have come out of the young because of this game. And the TV uh, shows and movies, uh, there's been 11 seasons now of The Walking Dead. I've never watched even one episode of the show. I've never cared to, but I understand from what I've read that it deals with zombies. That's okay, I'll pass. There's a new show, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. And uh, this is supposed to be a continuation of uh, Sabrina, the little teenage witch back from the Bewitched days. But it's dark. It's dark. Another show, His Dark Materials. Another show called The Witches. Then there's The Craft Legacy Witches. Then Netflix has a very popular show called The Order, and it's described as pretty young female occultists versus pretty young female werewolves. Wow. So it piques my curiosity, and this is what we were talking about in, in our prayer and conversation a few weeks ago. How interesting that there's people that won't even give a thought to the things of God and to the validity of whether there is good stuff in the supernatural with God. But they're fascinated with the supernatural there. Okay, do you see that? Man has an interest. He has a longing. He really has a craving for the supernatural. You'll remember that King Saul wanted an answer from God. He demanded that God give him an answer about an upcoming battle. And God refused to do so. You see, you don't come to God on your terms. You come to God on his terms. And King Saul wasn't willing to do that. And so when God wouldn't answer him, he went off to the witch of Endor. And he said, if I can't get an answer from God, I'll go to the dark side. I'll go to the evil spirits and I'll get an answer from them. And that's kind of what's happening in our world today. People have such a craving for the supernatural. They're going to the dark side if they don't go to the Lord. And so uh, this is something that we have to understand is happening in our world today, and Satan is only too happy to accommodate them. Okay, back to our text. Here's what it said. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, but haters of those who are good, treacherous, rash, conceited, and lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. If anything describes what we're dealing with today, it's that. It's that. Okay? And so there's hatred. You see, Satan is a hater. And when he works his work in people's lives, what he produces in their lives is hatred. You involve yourself with Satan, 
or you see people that are involved with Satan, you're going to see that hatred will be brought into you and hatred will come through you. The hatred that we see in our world today, it comes from him. Now consider the man that just recently, a few weeks ago, drove his SUV into the parade crowd in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Uh, he uh, said last week that he had been demonized, that he was demonized. I'll tell you what, think about that, okay? Uh, he killed six, he wounded about more than 60 people. And just last week, this 15-year-old sophomore high school student in Michigan, he shot and killed four students and wounded seven others. Now listen to this. They found that he had made a drawing before shooting those children. And on it, he drew a picture of a semi-automatic handgun, a drawing of a bullet, the words blood everywhere, and a picture of a person that was shot twice and bleeding. Then he put a smiling emoji on the picture, and he wrote these words, The thoughts won't stop. Help me. The thoughts won't stop. Help me. And minutes later, just later that day, he went out on a shooting rampage and wounded seven and killed four. The devil and his influence is very, very real. It can be very confusing. You get involved in him, it'll twist your mind. It will confuse you. You'll find yourself doing things that you never ever considered you would ever do. Satan is a hater and he produces hate. That is the product he produces in people's lives. Just look at all the rioting in the streets. You see Bible-carrying, church-going Christians out there rioting? No, you don't. You see people there that are just bent on destruction. They're looting. They're stealing. They're, they're burning buildings. They're shooting at people. There's an epidemic with cops being shot like never before. Can you imagine that? Where's all this hatred coming from? It comes from the devil. Now, I'm not saying the people aren't responsible, but I'm saying that God will produce good things in a person's life, and Satan produces evil things and hatred in a person's life, okay? Now, Satan has always been jealous of God. In fact, he was thrown out of heaven because he wanted to be like God. In fact, he claimed that he was like God. He even convinced one-third of the angels that he was like God. And that's how persuasive he can be, incredibly persuasive, okay? He's a destroyer, all right? He hates God and hates everyone and everything that in any way manifests the glory of God. And as a destroyer, look what he's done to mankind. Look at some of the major things that have happened in our world. Going back to the Garden of Eden, he went after the relationship that existed between God and man and the influence of man to violate the terms and the conditions of that relationship. He put hatred in Cain's heart through jealousy to kill his brother Abel. Again, jealousy. He's jealous of God. He's a jealous person. And so he produces that jealousy in the lives of others. At the Tower of Babel, he led the people into idolatrous worship. That tower was a, a ziggurat, which was used. They found the ruins of those towers. And that ziggurat was used to get up high enough in the sky that they could actually see the planets and the engravings on it showed that it was used for the worship of God. They were actually saying, let us build the city. Let us gather together and make a name for ourselves. Let's make this city of renown as a city of idolatrous worship. Well, we'll worship the stars and we will worship things other than God. And that's why God showed up on the scene, okay? 606 BC was the year that the Babylonian Empire came to full power, and Nebuchadnezzar, that was the first world empire of the four there have been, and so Satan was behind that. He, Nebuchadnezzar came in in 606 BC and destroyed Jerusalem. He took back captives to Babylon. He took a lot of the people back there. They were there for 70 years, and even includes Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and a young man by the name of Daniel. The next world empire was the Persian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire. And in that empire, uh, the devil inspired a wicked man named Haman to hatch a plot to exterminate the Jews. There's the story of Mordecai and Esther, his niece. And what a tremendous way that God used Esther to save the people. But he was trying to exterminate all the Jews there in Persia. That's what Satan was trying to do through this evil man, Haman. We move to the third um, world empire, the Grecian empire, and eventually Antiochus Epiphanes. Actually, he was Antiochus IV, but he renamed himself Antiochus Epiphanes because that meant Antiochus God manifest. Boy, scripture said they're going to be conceited. 
I'll tell you what. He outlawed the Jewish religion, he outlawed Jewish rites, and he desecrated the Jewish altar, and then he demanded that everybody worship Zeus as the supreme god. Devil-inspired, followed by the Roman Empire that was so brutal, that was so terrible to the work of God. The Roman Empire, the fourth empire that's ever existed, they condemned Jesus to death. They persecuted the church. Titus came in and destroyed Jerusalem in 70 A.D., we come all the way down through history, and you see it over and over and over again. Hitler, totally inspired of the devil, totally demon-possessed, killed six million Jews. He wanted to absolutely exterminate the Jewish race. He tried to conquer the whole world. He wanted to start the fifth world empire. And if it wasn't for our boys landing at Normandy and the grace of God and the help of God, we'd all be speaking German today. I want to tell you something. It's amazing how God... The devil empowered this man. It's said that he would sit outside when he was young and stare at the moon and sit out there and pray to the devil that he could be the Antichrist. He believed at one point that he was. As he was dying, they say he lamented the fact that he realized that he wasn't. Totally demon-possessed. That's what Satan produces in a person's life. Have you noticed in what I've just talked about how Satan seeks to infiltrate and use governments by possessing and using their leaders who'll do his bidding and do his will? Do you notice that? You notice in that litany that I came down of all the things that happened, he got leaders, he got people that were in power to be able to work through governments to enslave and harm the people. That's what he's doing around the world today. And if you haven't noticed, that's what he's trying to do in our country. Okay? It's a terrible thing that's happening. And you say, well, what are we going to do about it? How, how do we fight Satan? How can we fight demonic activity? What can we do? Well, the scriptures are very clear. In James 4, 7, it says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God, and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Some people like to concentrate on the part that says, Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But the scriptures tell us, once we have submitted ourselves to God, we're obeying his word, we're doing what he says, we're obeying his laws, we're giving our hearts and our lives to him. Once we are submitted to God, then when we resist the devil, the devil will flee from us. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, and they cast down imaginations and every high Thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and brings into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Do you see that? Wow. Romans chapter 8, verse 31 says, If God be for us, who can be against us? I love this. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, speaking of demonic activity, demon spirits, and the work of the devil, John says, Every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God, and this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof you've heard that it should come. Even now it is already in the world, the spirit of Antichrist. Ye are of God, little children. You have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Fasten your seatbelt. When you go back to the original language, and you look at the spirit of Antichrist, you find out that it really could be translated the spirit of lawlessness. The spirit of lawlessness already at work in the world. Really? The spirit of lawlessness? Is that not what we're dealing with today? Look back at our text. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, haters of those that are good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Yeah, that's lawlessness. People don't listen to the police. People don't listen to school teachers. People don't listen to the word of God and what God's claims are on their life. The politicians don't follow the Constitution sometimes. They don't follow the very laws that they themselves have passed. Lawlessness. Lawlessness. You see, lawlessness comes from the devil. He is the first that brought about lawlessness. He says, I don't have to listen to God. I'm just as good as God. He was the minister of music in heaven. All the music in heaven was under his control. 
Now, he probably was the first minister of music that said, I'll be like the pastor, but I want to tell you something. He's not the last, okay? But I want to tell you, though, he said, I'm just as good as God, and I want what God has. I want the worship that comes to God. And he did that through lawlessness in heaven. And he perpetrates lawlessness here on the earth. You don't have to be afraid of the devil. The Bible tells us that if we are born again, if we have the Lord in our lives, we've accepted him as our savior. The Bible tells us that we have protections. We don't have to be afraid of the devil. I want to tell you something. Do not open yourself to his realm. Watch your activities. Be careful what you watch on TV or in the movies. Be careful what you read. Don't open a door to that. Be careful who you associate with. Do you know how many people went down to riots and got involved in riots that were supposed to be peaceful. And next thing you knew, they were turned around. The agenda was changed. And all of a sudden, those that came with evil motives and with evil agenda started to have an influence on the ones that came for peaceful reasons. And pretty soon, there was rioting going on everywhere. People were caught up in it. People that did not intend to be rioters were rioters. Be careful who you associate with, okay? You don't have to be afraid of the devil, but the Bible tells us that Paul the Apostle said, do not be ignorant of his devices. Do not put blinders on your eyes and refuse to understand how he works. Realize how he works and get yourself in a position to where you're right with the Lord. Once you've submitted yourself to God and you're right with God, when you resist the devil, he will flee from you. Wow. I hope this helped you today. That's what's going on in our world today. All the hatred. All these things that are happening, it's out of control. It comes from the evil one. What can you do to protect your life and your family? Submit yourself to God. Make sure that you are on the right side. You say, well, God's on my side. No, God doesn't get on our side. God is where he is and where he's been eternally. We have the option of going and getting on God's side. And I suggest today, if you're not on God's side, move from where you are and get yourself on God's side. Let's pray together. I'm praying for this one, dear Lord, that's listening. Lord, I pray that they will pick themselves up and move. If they're not where they're supposed to be, let them move to your side. Let them come to you. Let them submit themselves to you. If they have sin in their hearts, if they've never given their life to you, let them pray even now. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Let me be a child of God. I want to be on your side. I want to claim you as my Lord. I want to turn my life over to you. I want to be far away from the dark, evil one. And Lord, I give my life to you. You promise me that if I submit to you, I can resist the devil and he'll flee. Psalm chapter 91, Lord, gives us so many promises of how you're going to protect us from the devil. And Lord, I pray that you'll just cause that person that's praying with me now to begin to read your word, to spend time praying with you, to associate with the right people so that they can see a big change and difference in their life. And we ask you for it, Jesus. We ask it in your name. Amen. Well, this has been a different kind of a meeting today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps you. And when you see what's happening in our world today, realize it's the work of the devil. What can you do? You align yourself with God. You get yourself on the right side. And you and your family can find some protection. God bless you. We'll see you here again next week on Music and the Word with the Circes.